First, we need to access the files within the vCenter ISO file. Right-click on the downloaded vCenter ISO file and select Mount. Once mounted, click Open to access the files. Next, copy all the files from the mounted ISO to your local computer. In this lab, I will create a new folder named VCSA inside the C drive and copy all the files to this VCSA folder. Open the VCSA folder where you copied the files. Inside, you will find the VMware vCenter Server Appliance OVA file. To convert the OVA file to OVF files, we need to use the OVF tool provided by VMware. The required tools are located in the VM Tool folder. Open the Windows command prompt and navigate to the VCSA folder inside the C drive. Then, go to the VCSA subfolder and access the OVF tool folder. My operating system is Windows, so I will go into the Win32 folder using the command prompt. Once inside, you can find the OVF tool application file. To run the OVF tool, type ovftool.exe. Then insert the path to the VMware vCenter Server Appliance OVA file location and specify the destination location where you want the newly converted OVF files to be saved. In this lab, I will select the same location where the OVA file is already saved. Press Enter to start the conversion process. Wait until the OVA to OVF conversion is complete. After the conversion, you can see the converted files inside the destination folder. Now, you need to identify the OVF file. Check the file properties to differentiate between the OVA and OVF files. In my lab, the first file is the OVA and the second one is the OVF. Right-click on the OVF file and open it using a text editor. Find the line related to guestinfo.sys.upgrade.import directory. For this, I will use the Find tool by pressing Ctrl and F keys. Change the value from false to true, then save the file. The MF file is not required, so I will delete it. Now, open VMware Workstation Pro. Next, we need to create a virtual network. Navigate to the Edit menu and select Virtual Network Editor. Click on Change Settings and then click Add Network. Now, select a network to add. I will choose VMNet 10 as my network and click OK. Next, we need to insert the network IP. I'm using 192.168.1.0 with a 24 subnet mask. I will use my vCenter IP address as 192.168.1.23 with a 24 subnet mask. Uncheck Local DHCP Server. Then, click Apply and OK. Now, everything is set up. We can start installing the vCenter server on VMware Workstation Pro. First, click on Files and then select Open. Browse to the location where we previously saved and edited the OVF file, select it, and click Open. Read and accept the End User License Agreement, then click Next. Insert the vCenter server inventory name and the VM save path. In this lab, I will create a new folder named GTO Lab in my D drive to save the files of the vCenter server VM. Click Next to continue. Now, you need to select the vCenter Server Deployment options. You can choose the deployment option based on your requirements. When you select any deployment option, you can see the description related to the selected option. 
In this lab, I will select the deployment option as small and click next. Next, you need to set up the vCenter server properties. On the network configuration page, first, you need to insert the vCenter IP family. I will use an IPv4 address, so I will insert IPv4. Then, you need to insert the network mode. In this lab, I will use a static IP address, so I will insert static as the network mode. Next, insert the vCenter server IP address. Then, insert the prefix length. I will insert 24 as my prefix length. Next, insert the default gateway and then insert the DNS server IP address. Finally, you can insert the host network identity. On the SSO configuration page, insert the single sign-on password for the vCenter server and confirm the password. On the system configuration page, you need to insert the root password for the vCenter server appliance. Currently, there is no need to fill in the update configuration page, so I will keep it as it is. If you want to connect to the customer experience improvement program, you can set CEIP as true. In this lab, I will not enable CEIP. Finally, you can set the network properties. I will set the domain name and domain search path and click Import. Wait for the file importing process to complete. After it is done, you will see the new vCenter server VM appear in the inventory and automatically power up. You need to wait some time for the power up process to complete. Now you need to configure virtual network settings on your ESXi host. First, right-click on your vCenter VM and go to Settings. Next, select Network Adapter from the Settings menu. Under the Network Adapter settings, select Custom to specify a particular virtual network. Now, select the virtual network we configured previously. Click OK. Now. You can access the vCenter server appliance interface by typing the vCenter IP address followed by port 5480 in your web browser. Insert the vCenter root password we configured previously and log in to vCenter. Now, you need to start the stage 2 installation of the vCenter server. On the Getting Started page, click on Setup. Click Next on the introduction page. Now, you can see the configurations we inserted previously. If needed, you can edit these settings. I will change the time synchronization setting to use ESXi and click Next. Insert the single sign-on password and confirm it. Don't forget to add the single sign-on domain name. If you want to join the Customer Experience Improvement Program, you can enable it and then click Next. On the Ready to Complete page, you can verify the details and click on Finish. Accept the warning message about not being able to pause the installation after it starts. Wait for the Stage 2 installation to complete. Now you can access your vCenter server appliance and also the vCenter client. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.